Thank you for joining us on a Saturday morning. My name is Erica, and I'm the second, uh, and I am a second semester student at ADP, majoring in liberal arts. Okay, so in today's virtual session, uh, we are here to support you in your route to pursue higher education at reputable overseas universities. You'll get a chance to interact with the faculty members, gain transfer-related information from the university placement personnel, listen to first-hand experiences from our very own alumni located in the US and Canada, and by the end of the session, get a gist of what a Taylor's ADP has to offer. Uh, we also have a second presenter, her name is Shan, and she's a fifth semester student here, and she's majoring in business. And both of us will be our moderators for today. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Ms. Prema Ponodure, Head of Department of the Department of Liberal Arts and Humanities at the School of Liberal Arts and Sciences to give her opening remarks. Ms. Prema has been with Taylor's for over two decades now. In 2017, she was the only Malaysian selected from various parts of the world to participate in a highly competitive fellowship program for scholars by the American State Department for six weeks. This initiative at New York University was funded under the Fulbright program. Well, over to you, Ms. Prema. Thank you, Erica. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Prema Ponadurai. Um, a very warm welcome to everyone joining our session today. Um, thank you for taking the time to be with us and share with you our in-depth information and insights into our program. But first of all, let me congratulate you on taking your first step towards making an informed decision about your future. So I'm the head of department, the Department of Liberal Arts and Humanities at, T at the School of Liberal Arts and Sciences, where the ADP program is positioned. Under normal circumstances, we would have invited you to our campus, had a coffee, chatted, shown you our campus and facilities, and answered all your questions. However, as we have seen, all our lives have taken a turn, and we have had to adapt, learn, and relearn how we go about our daily lives. So here we are virtually, but nevertheless, with the same goals and focus, which is to ensure you make the best decision about your future and your choice of university. With this current pandemic, we have learned that flexibility is the key. And this is in essence, the beauty of the American degree program, which you will soon hear. I would also like to share with you some milestones that the program has achieved. After providing ADP in Malaysia for 24 years, we have now a Taylor's American Degree franchise in Jakarta, Indonesia, offered by our Indonesian partner, Uni Satuguna or UIC College. This is a testament of our quality of teaching, content, partnerships, and reputation in Malaysia and globally. To enhance teaching and learning, continuity and sustainability, we have en enhanced and upgraded our teaching with the inclusion of state-of-the-art technology and devices like the use of lightboard teams and labster. We have also built strong industry linkages with local and international organizations. This enables our students to experience hands-on training, develop future skills, and provides exposure to the industry at a very early age, uh, stage of your degree. As a result of these partnerships, we have an industry awarded book prize, which is given to top students at the commencement ceremony. And in addition, we have ADP students who have been given internship opportunities with our industry partners. With that, today we have a great lineup 
of our academics for you to meet. They are highly experienced, specialized in their related disciplines, a good mix of local and international, and play key roles in all aspects of our programs, be it teaching, research, student activities, or industry engagement. In addition, we have our students like Kai Ting and Erica, and also our alumni who are joining us from Malaysia, US, and Canada. You will be able to hear and ask them questions about their journey and experiences firsthand. Before I end, I would like to share with you some upcoming series, our upcoming series entitled In Conversation with Taylor's ADP. This will include sessions with US partners, uh, academy, uh, Education USA with the US Embassy, uh, alumni sharing, studying and working in the US, and we invite you to personalize counseling sessions with our academics in all disciplines. I would also like to encourage you to follow our ADP Facebook and Instagram page. The page is called the Official Taylor's ADP page. And join us um, for the next sessions on these um, conversations. Thank you again for joining us. And I hope to see you in our program and part of our ADP family. All the best, stay safe, and enjoy the session. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Prema. Now let us introduce our program director, Dr. Law Ka Heng, to give you an overview of the ADP program, which has a legacy of 25 years. Dr. Law has been in the academic line for over 30 years now and brings with him a wealth of teaching and managerial experiences. He's completed his first degree in physics and computer science from a US university, has a master's in IT and a PhD in information science. Now we present to you Dr. Law our ADP program director. Hello? Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, uh, my connection is not good. All right, um, a very good morning to all. Welcome to the ADP webinar. I'm Dr. Lokahin, the program director of American Degree Transfer Program. Okay. Next. Eric? Let me present an overview to you on our ADP. ADP established in 1996. Okay, we have about 25 years of academic excellence. And as you can see, okay, we have two plus two program, which student can transfer 60 to 90 credit to US university. Okay, or one plus four program, which is special arrangement with the Petronas. Okay, and there are other corp sponsorship also. Okay, so as from photo, you can see that. Okay, President, President about um, our Taylor's campus five years ago. Besides, I was trying to travel to Australia, Europe, Asia, Malaysia, and so on. So we have international partnership with India, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Myanmar. Okay. We have a virtual launch of our Indonesian franchise program just a few weeks ago. Okay. Next. Eric. So the world is the oyster. You can see that students from all over the world would come to Taylor's ADP 
to complete their one year or two years with us in ADP program. After that, some of them would transfer to US, Canada, Australia, and Europe, and also some may stay back to study in Malaysia. Next. The ADP major. So ADP, in ADP, we have basically, we have four major, that is engineering, business, computer science, and liberal arts. Under engineering, we have aerospace, engineering, applied science, or chemical, petroleum, engineering, civil engineering, electro, electronic and electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. Under business, student can study uh, actual science, econs, finance, international business, under computer science, a very popular field would be big data, artificial intelligence, computer graphics, computer gaming, computer network, and so on. And under the liberal arts, students can study anthropology, history, mass comm, political science, psychology, and sociology. Okay, next. Eric. Now, <clears throat> this is the pathway for our students to transfer. Okay, we have the Petrona Scholar Pathway, which um, student would do less than 30 credit and, tra and transfer to US University in the first year. And also, we have the 2 plus 2 pathway where students would study the general requirement or compulsory modules in about 60 to 70 credits. And after that, they would complete their study in US to complete 60 credit hours. Next. <clears throat> so the advantages of study in ADP in terms of academic, um, each student will be assigned to a, pers to a personal academic advisor for them to choose their um, course, et cetera. And also we have the peer assisted study session, a peer to peer program, body program, club and society. And also in terms of financial, it is cost saving by following our two plus two program and we have the free university placement support, university application process. And also in terms of adaptability, students can adapt to new, new learning environment, experience an international classroom, understand US grading and they can live independently. More importantly, okay, they will observe flexibility in the program. Next. <clears throat> Eric. Eric. So for the two plus two popular transfer, in year 2019, we have about 142 students transfer out from ADP and 119 to you to US, about 85% of this 119 would be placed in the tier one university in US. And also we have 12 students transferred to Canada, four to Australia, seven to others university, including Malaysia. Okay, and <clears throat> the list is the um, list of the popular university that our student transferred to. Okay, so as you can see, University of Minnesota, uh, and here, this is the this is the academic uh, leadership team for ADP. So from the left, we have uh, um, Dr. Wong, who is the computer science department head of computer science department. Uh, Miss Lupin, um, she is the stream coordinator for the business department. Miss Tawa, she is the stream coordinator for the liberal arts and Mr. Alvin, who is the stream coordinator. 
next eric <clears throat> so in for we have about 10 full time uh, academic eric next one Okay, this is our student success. Our students successfully transferred to a uh, tier one university and good university. Like um, we have uh, Chi Song, Liu Chi Song, who have been accepted into the MIT. And this is the photo that he was interviewed by IFM um, last month. He is admitted into the world rank number one university. The next one is Mr. Jasran who is an admitted to, um, accepted into Wharton Business School, which is the US rank number one business school. And also Jaya Stiawan, who is um, accepted into tier one university in US. Next. Eric. Now, in ADP, we, the lecturer and also student, will organize event. So we have organized one um, face, um, physical event in March 7, which is the American Festival, and about 350 ADP and high school students participated in this event. And also, we have organized the online webinar on the financial literacy Okay, we've titled Turning Crisis into Opportunity in the New uh, Normal. Okay, we have, as we have um, about 200 participants att attended this webinar. Okay. <clears throat> also, in terms of learning activity, um, Eric, next one. We have visiting professor from Drake University who delivered the guest lecture to our students last month. Also, we have this um, alumni sharing session whereby four of our alumni sharing the, their experience with our students. We also organized the Land Studio Workshop um, for our students in face-to-face -face as well as online. And also we have the four days free online health and wellness introductory course from 16 to 19 June. Okay. And during the RMCO, our ADP student will also return to the campus to do a practical uh, test, practical class. Okay. Next, Eric. Okay, so um, we also have multilingual counseling session with specialists from the school on the 8th of August, 15th of August, and 22nd of August, as mentioned by Ms. Prema just now, that we have the, the other series of webinar during these sessions. So these are the specialists who can speak in Mandarin, Tamil, BM, and Bahasa Indonesia, Bangladeshi and Pakistan language as well as Bengali. Okay. So um, with that, I end the I end the uh, my session. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Law. Now, um, Kai Ting, have you heard about Labster, the three D virtual lab? Yeah, that's the online lab thingy, right? Yeah, yeah. So with RMCO still in place, we've had to depend on the online virtual world to have classes. I took biology with lab this semester, and I was really worried about how we were going to complete our lab requirements. But then, Labster came into picture, and I have to say, it made the lab practical sessions a lot cooler. So let us invite Dr. Yvonne Kong, 
senior lecturer and also one of ADP's e-learning champions to share some of the innovative teaching and learning approaches adopted by the ADP academics. Dr. Yvonne? Yeah, good morning to all. Today, I'm going to share with you how we produce an effective online learning environment for our students. To simulate the physical classroom environment, me and my colleagues are utilizing these tools that I'm going to show you in next few slides. The first tools that we use is digital pen or digital board, which allow us to imitate the whiteboard function to explain technical drawing and formulas, especially for science module. By using these tools, student coursework can be assessed and marked in a very systematic way as well. Let me show you next uh, movie clip. So students submit coursework in a uh, um, different format, PDF or Word file. So um, by using these tools, it can be assessed and marked systematically. Another similar tool is mobile projector. Okay, which is used to screen our hand notes or any objects that we want to showcase to our students in 3D view uh, during lectures. With this tool, students are able are able to follow closely the multiplex course content, especially technical module, which requires uh, complicated so, uh, solution steps. Another great tool that we use is Lightboard. Okay, you will see from this video, our calculus lecturer, Mr. Alvin, is using Lightboard to deliver his lecture, providing students an exciting virtual learning experience on mathematics. In our question, we have a dx. So we are trying to rearrange this in terms of dx. So we rearrange this, we are going to obtain du is over 3x squared plus 1. Okay, so once we have got this part done, here we put 2 yeah. and it so will be e plus order. Thank you. Okay, for practical labs, we are practicing another option virtual science lab called Labsters. This Labster allows students to perform various experiments through well, virtual labs, interface. Labs so now prepare. let's take a look on how uh, this works. Lab simulations aligned with your core science curriculum. Published data shows that Labster simulations significantly increase learning outcomes. Each simulation covers specific learning objectives and provide comprehensive theory pages, unlimited instrumentation, and engaging 3D animations. Upon launching a simulation, you will have the opportunity to go through a tutorial in order to learn how to navigate the simulation. When asked, is this the first time you are playing a Labster simulation, choose the option, yes, please walk me through the features of the lab pad. You will never be left without guidance in the lab. Arrows will indicate where to look, holograms will show you where to place objects or where to go, and instructions will be available in the lab pad. The lab pad contains the following sections. The home page, which provides instructions and quiz questions. The theory section, which gives access to all the information needed in order to be able to answer the quiz questions. The media section, which stores all the different visuals presented in the sim okay. simulation. Yeah. The mission section, which provides... Yeah, I think that's all. Okay, so next I'll, I'm going to show you our TELUS integrated Moodle e-learning system. Uh, also known as uh, Times. It is a platform for us to interact with students and for the lecturers to upload teaching materials such as lecture notes and for the students to submit their coursework. And with this platform, student assessment are guided and monitored closely by the lecturers. Therefore, I welcome you to join ATP as we provide powerful blended and online learning environment for our students. That's all for my sharing today. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Yvonne Kong. The next session is something that I've actually experienced firsthand when I took programming in C++ module. I've actually attended the Lens workshop conducted by Snapchat, and I found this industry engagement opportunity a really valuable experience. Now with us is Dr. Azim Khan, Senior Lecturer, Active Researcher, and ADP's Computer Science Module Leader, and Mr. Nazrin Hakim, a computer science major and fifth semester student. 
both of them will now highlight Taylor's ADP industry collaboration with Snap Incorporated. Please. Uh, Dr. Azim, you are muted. Please unmute. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cathy. We at ADP, we practice uh, uh, industrial uh, practices, especially when we talk about software engineering, where we try to uh, enhance our students' skills by uh, adopting uh, software practices that are implemented in real-time software industry. Now to enhance uh, our student skills, we have uh, expert industrial advisory panel. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, we have Mr. Andrew Tang uh, uh, from end to end Connect for Her and Mr. Gan Kim Hoon and Mr. Joanne David Poraro, uh, who is from Snap Inc. And Mr. Gunn is uh, Vice President of Equity Markets and Investment Bank, Brahad. And uh, yeah, we have Mr. Andrew Tang. He's from end to end Connect Brahad. He's a technopreneur and co-founder of the largest Asian-based Spanish share company, offering a full suit financial investment platform. So to uh, enhance our student skills, we incorporate uh, uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0 aspects like uh, augmented reality, virtual reality to enhance our student skills. We have MOU with end-to-end, -end, and we also had MOU with uh, uh, Snap Incorporation, as you can see in the pictures. And a lot of our students have participated in the workshops that have been organized by Snap Inc. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, next slide, please. So SNAP has uh, conducted many workshops, uh, recent activities at Taylor's campus, as you can see. Uh, we have uh, our students participating in the Snapchat workshop, uh, learning how to use uh, Lens Studio, and they are able to create their own lenses, and later on they can publish it, and others can use them as well. Yes, please, can you go to the next slide? And uh, during this pandemic, we have had a webinar where we have uh, around 50 registered participants uh, where they have learned how to create lenses uh, uh, to uh, be at home. That is stay home, stay safe. That was the title uh, for this uh, webinar and our students have really enjoyed a lot. Yes, next slide please. Yeah, these are some of the visuals that we have during our MOU signing ceremony uh, with SNAP Incorporation. Yes, next slide please. Uh, these are our students who have participated uh, in uh, Snapchat MOU. Now I uh, request our uh, beloved student, Mr. Nazrin, to share his experiences with these uh, uh, workshops. Now uh, to Nazrin. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zin. So I'm going to share about my experiences during this uh, workshop. All right. So just one sentence that the whole event was really fun. Okay. So the background and how it all started was that Snapchat was looking for a lens creator in the Southeast Asia. In fact, um, there's only one uh, official Snapchat lens creator in Malaysia. So um, Snap Inc. comes straight from California, USA to Malaysia to get a hold of workshop to get new uh, recruits for the official lens creator. So they get to hold a workshop at Taylor's University and few other universities on, around Malaysia. So, the very good thing about this uh, workshop is that they teach you to create a lens regardless of your background. So um, whether you have a computer science background, arts, or even if you don't know anything about it, you will be able to create lens, lenses uh, based on their intuitive software and also workshop. So every time they finish the workshop, they will have a 30 minute lensathon. Lensathon is basically a marathon for creating lenses. So. My team and I um, won one of the lensathons uh, since we uh, got in the workshop for two to three times already. Yeah, and then if you won the lensathon that um, they've created, you can win multiple exclusive items such as um, plush toy or playing cards that you can only get from Snapchat. So it's very, very exclusive. 
All right. So not to mention, you will also make good, good friends during the workshop. Um, for me personally, I had five to six friends from the workshop that I'm still in contact with uh, up until today. So uh, yeah, like always, uh, they will make advanced, more advanced workshop, workshop for a second or third time participants. Uh, in my time, they had it in Starling Mall, uh, Starling Mall, yeah. And then, like always, they do another Lancerton for the uh, more advanced creation. And one of my friends uh, won the first prize, and the prize was uh, a $200 uh, US dollar Snapchat spectacles. So he's here. Uh, Bernard, maybe you want to show your yeah. uh, spec uh, Snapchat spectacle that you got from Snapchat? Oh, guys. I don't know if, I, if you guys can see me clearly, but I won this pretty cool lens. Uh, at uh, one of the events at starting more I, I, I believe yeah so so what this does is that you put it on and then there's a little camera at the top left corner and then you can just click these little buttons and then you can take photos and record videos in the first person perspective so it's kind of cool uh, even though I don't do photographies but it's still a cool thing to keep and and this thing is not cheap it costs around two hundred dollars as mentioned by Nazarin so yeah, so I, I'm I'm pretty impressed by how much how much effort they invested in us students and also in the collaboration with tailors. So, so if you have a chance to join Snapchat workshop, do it, and you can have a lot of fun experience, and and you probably will stand a chance to win cool prizes like this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's really cool. Thank you, Bennett. So all of these awesome events, um, they are sponsored by Taylor, so you don't need to pay anything to join the events that uh, is available in ADP. So since then, I've been invited into the group with the only official lens created in Malaysia, which has been really great because we've been creating lenses and we had month monthly meetings to discuss about the new features in the lens studio. And it's a really good transition for your career life where you will, you will work with people that you don't know and have discussions and be successful. And the best thing is you will get a certification that you will be able to create virtual lenses from Snapchat, which might boost your chance to get a work in the creative industry, especially in this tech-savvy world where augmented reality is the way of the future. So that's about it. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Azim and Mr. Nazreen. Next up is ADP's Industry Engagement Initiative with end to end Connect Berhad, an M Investment Bank, which culminated in a successful InterVarsity Stock Challenge 2019 with Ms. Lin Yo Ping, Senior Lecturer and Stream Coordinator of the Business Department at the helm of it all, and Mr. Ong Jin Kai, an ADP alumnus and the InterVarsity Stock Challenge Team Student Leader who is joining us from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, United States. Please. Thank you, Kai Ting. Next slide, please. Yeah, this InterVarsity Stock Challenge 2019 actually was an industry engagement initiative organized by our ADP Industry Advisory Panel and to end Connect Berhad together with our industry mentor from M Investment Bank. Next. There were a total of 787 teams, approximately about 3,000 students from universities, colleges and high schools participated in this challenge. Three universities actually were pay up with three booking houses to compete in the stock trading for three months. Each team actually was uh, given a startup capital of uh, 100,000 to trade in the real time as exactly what's happened in the Bursa Malaysia. Next, please. Yeah, this event actually had been uh, organized not only okay, with us as an academic staff, we had a group of very dedicated students actually had helped us throughout the event. May I invite uh, Jin Kai to share his experience? Jin Kai, please. Thank you, Ms. Lin, for the introduction. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jin Kai, and I am currently a freshman studying at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in the United States, and I am currently majoring in actuarial science. So as Ms. Lee mentioned, um, in this program, I was the student lead of the group of student volunteers who were in charge of organizing this event together with the, with the staff. And we were mainly in charge of the promotion and the recruitment of students for the stock challenge. And we were also required to maintain regular communication with the project leads and also our industry engagement panel um, from M Investment Bank and also end-to-end -end Connect Berhan. 
So now I'll just briefly walk through the events that we organized as part of the Stop Challenge. So the first event that we organized was the Stop Challenge Workshop, which was to give participants a brief introduction onto, how, uh, onto investment and also to the stock market. The next slide, please. And these are some pictures from the events. So as you can see, um, we were also, we, we had the great um, honor to be um, able to partner with an investment bank and we learned uh, quite a lot of uh, valuable information uh, on doing the workshop. Next slide, please. Uh, and we were also interviewed by IFM because we, we wanted to uh, get a larger platform to share our um, great competition and to get more participants to enter this competition. And in the end, we managed to get around yeah, I managed, in the end, we managed to get a team from all over Malaysia, from um, all the different students, from high schools and universities. And next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. So finally, um, one of the, so we organized the Stock Challenge uh, opening ceremony, which was attended by over 500 students from all over Malaysia, from, um, from uh, over 12 different universities and over, tw uh, over 20 different high schools. And as you can see, this is the opening ceremony, and this is some pictures from it. Uh, next slide, please. And so after the stock challenge started, we also um, organized financial workshops held by an investment bank to teach students even more detailed techniques on, the, on stock analysis. And as you can see, these are some pictures from the technical analysis workshops. So it's very, um, it's very nice that M Investment Bank still continued to provide us their support and guidance um, throughout the competition. And they even provided workshops uh, to help our students and to guide our students in um, having good investment strategies. And okay, next slide, please. So just a brief recap of uh, what I learned from organizing this event. So throughout this event, we were required to work together with different um, parties, like, um, like the instructors and also the industry engagement panels. And definitely when organizing a project, there will be a lot of conflict. So I, I learned about um, conflict resolution skills and also how to negotiate with different parties to reach a, a reasonable compromise that everyone was um, uh, happy with. And besides that, I also gained uh, organization skills while organizing the stock challenge, which allows, allows me to thrive in my current university. And at the University of Wisconsin Medicine, I'm currently on the, I'm currently the employer engagement um, committee member. So like here, I regularly engage with uh, different insurance companies um, and also consulting firms who wish to come present at our university. And I gained those skills by um, leading the Stock Challenge Committee and also uh, interacting with the different, um, different companies like uh, N2N and Connect Berhad and also M Investment Bank. And that is all for my presentation. Back to you, Ms. Lin. Thank you, Jin Kai. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me highlight one of our team that we feel very proud of. This is our second prize winner. Okay, in fact, Tim Taylor's actually won a lot of prizes. We actually won approximately about 80% of the prizes. We feel really, really proud of our students' commitment and with the excellence guidance from our industry uh, mentor. Okay, so this team, Ikan Baka, what is so special about them? They actually are our ADP engineering students who do not have any investment knowledge at all at the beginning. They express themselves like a blind man in the dark. But with their determination, their willingness to take up the challenge to go beyond their limits and with the excellent guidance from uh, M Investment Bank, so they actually spring up to the top and eventually emerge as the second prize winner. So this is something that we feel students should take up. Okay, whatever challenge, okay, to test yourself to go beyond. Okay, this event actually had been covered a lot in the media. Okay, next. Yeah, again, our grand prize winner and the second prize winner, together with our another student's leader, Guang Li, were invited to IFM again to share their experience and also sharing their great success story. Okay, next. Yeah. So, um, M Investment Bank actually had generously uh, sponsored us for the grand finale appreciation lunch to recognize our excellence achievement in the stock challenge and also to celebrate the, okay, together with our winners and also their family members during the lunch. Okay, next. Right, this is another uh, event that our industry advisory panel had uh, 
participated together with us to give a lot of the insightful information about the investment, okay? And also to expose our students to the um, opportunities available in the IT industry as well as the, um, as well as the uh, what do you call it? financial investment market and also IT industry. Again, we welcome you for our next challenge that we are planning to, to organize on next year. So looking forward for your participation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Lim and Mr. Ong. So Erica, I heard you recently participated in the Australasian InterVarsity International Debate Competition under the Taylor's Debating Team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a really rewarding experience. And what about you, Kai Ting? I heard that you are a sports enthusiast. Yeah, I'm really glad you asked. I'm really big on sports and I was looking to transfer to the University of Wisconsin-Madison, not only because of its high ranking, but also because of its popular sports club called Hoofers. This club is dedicated to extracurricular activities, quite similar to our ADP Crimson Club. That's why I'm really excited for the next speakers. Let me introduce you to our alumni, Mr. Sean Han, the current president of the Malaysian Student Association in Indiana University, Wilmington, and Mr. In Guang Li, our former ADP Crimson Club president. Both have been very extremely active in extracurricular activities during their time at ADP, and are also very active in several clubs and societies at their current university at the University of Indiana, Wilmington. Please. Hi everyone, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Gong Li and I'm from the class of um, 2019. Um, currently I'm studying in Indiana University Bloomington and I'm a sophomore after completing one semester in the US this past spring. Although my US campus experience has been put to a halt after just about um, two months, unfortunately due to the COVID-19 pandemic, yet I have like uh, many opportunities to experience many wonderful events through the beneficial preparation uh, from ADP curricular activities. In Taylor's ADP, I'm fortunate enough to be elected as the president of uh, Crimson Club, where we organize uh, sports events where some people think that sports is just for fun without any beneficial uh, towards your academic. Let me tell you what more benefit does it brings to you. As I mentioned, uh, I'm currently studying in Indiana, Indiana University Bloomington as a finance student. Um, I have joined a FRET uh, business fraternity to develop my soft skills in order to prepare me for my future career. Uh, one good way that I bonded well with my friends in the fraternity is through sports. In the America, Frisbee is actually a very famous sport uh, where a true Crimson Club it not only allowed me to escape from my stressful studies, it has also allowed me to build key connections around the fraternity using my frisbee skill as a common interest to you know more friends around. Other than that, um, volleyball is also a new sport that I picked up through Crimson. Um, I learned how to become like a volleyball referee through every long semester of Crimson League. Through this experience, I got like a part-time job at the recreational center on my campus as a volleyball referee in order to earn some more pocket money to increase my allowance. When we talk about money, ADP does help us too at building a strong foundational background in the finance field through the InterVarsity Stock Challenge held by Taylor's ADP alongside with notable industry partners in MBank and N2N Connect Bahar. The Taylor's ADP degree program truly allows us to the freedom to explore different sectors rather than just only our majors. Although I'm a business major student, the curricular activities allow me to be more than just a part of um, business. Well, I also can experience more uh, in different fields, such as I was a part of the student union committee where I was in charge of the tech and law department. The tech and law department helped me like prepared me to carry on more le leadership positions in the US as currently I'm assisting Sean in the tech and lock department currently uh, in the Malaysian Student Association. Through all these curricular activities, I was lucky enough to meet many good souls in ADP. That includes uh, Mr. Sean Han. We've both uh, experienced many wonderful memories in ADP through all these curricular activities. 
So fortunately, um, Sean Han and I both transferred into the same university here in Indiana University, Bloomington. Uh, sorry, Sean, you are muted. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you, Gong Li. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining the talk. Um, as you all know, my name is Sean, and I am definitely a proud alumni of the Taylor's ADP family, class of 2019 as well. So I remember during my first semester here, when I transferred to America, I would say the biggest culture shock would be meeting so many international students. But I would say one of the benefits I've gained from Taylor's University is the diverse group of students that you get to meet in the Taylor's ADP uh, family. So I would say, I would definitely argue that Taylor's ADP has the most international students joining in an ADP program in Malaysia, which gives you the exposure to meet students from all around the world, from Indonesia, Japan, Korea, China, and this allows you to have the opportunity to interact with different students and their backgrounds. And apart from any academic life in the ADP, I would definitely say joining the extracurricular activities there is definitely no regrets. And a lot of things that I've gained are definitely leadership, high management skills, because I remember back in 2018, I've joined the Crimson family. I've also opened a club, uh, opened a house to compete in the Crimson family, and it's just an amazing opportunity to be able to work with a group of people. I remember f having fifty to sixty members in my house, having the opportunity to interact with each and one of them with other houses. It's a truly amazing experience to see everyone push their best for the prize, first place. To show their team spirit on the court and off the court, you're gonna be making a lot of valuable friendships through these activities. I was also the treasurer for the student union back in my time at Taylor's ADP. And I'd say the one thing that everyone should be, um, I would say appreciative of is the opportunity to be bonding with all students in ADP. You may not be a very big program, we may have only two to 300 students, but this is where you gain the opportunity to mix and to create wonderful friendships with each and one of you. Because 70 to 80% of us ADP students are going to transfer to America. So when you secure these friendships, you're going to create wonderful memories when you go to America or Canada or any other countries that you may transfer to. Just like Wang Li, I've met him through ADP. We joined several organizations together. We've, uh, we went for Crimson, from Student Union. And because of that, we are able to create that friendship where I'm able to uh, move in with him here in Indiana University, Bloomington. We're able to find uh, housing together. We can help each other in our lives here in America. So these are just wonderful stuff that you can gain from having just joining by, just by joining one organization in Taylor's, you're going to create a lot of wonderful memories throughout your years there. And this is just a photo of me and Gong Li uh, having a fishing session in, in a nearby lake around here. Right. So I would like to end my speech by saying thank you everyone for listening and I really hope that you enjoy your time at Taylor's ADP. Do join some extracurricular activities, even though now it's going to be a tough time for everyone. I'm sure the ADP clubs are working their best to find ways to engage with students online. And if there are any questions, do reach out to the ADP faculty members and also the ADP Student Union if you have any questions upcoming, upcoming year. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ing Wang Lee and Mr. Sean. Actually, I have a question from an interested participant about the academics. So one of them asks, how should I maintain a high CGPA if you 
uh, if you are studying and are still playing sports and doing extracurricular activities? Do you have any tips and advice on that? Uh, one, one main tip about maintaining your CGPA throughout ADP is that you must find the balance in between um, extracurricular activities and your study activities. Definitely, you have to put your academic as the first, but at the same time, you must, you must know that us, we, ha we have to like, balance it out with our social life and also our academic life. One way that, one trick that I maintain is that for me, I study hard and also I play hard. So at the same time, I, w I wouldn't be losing in any side. So the main tip I can give you guys is that make sure you guys study hard and that only gives you the opportunity to actually play hard. Okay, uh, thank you, Sean, and thank you, Guangli, for joining us despite the time difference, and thank you for the question. I'm really looking forward to meeting you at the other side of the world very soon. But I'll need a lot of help, assistance, and guidance to get there. So thankfully, here at Taylor's, we have the University Placement Office to help us with our ADP transfers. I'd like to introduce Ms. Gan Chai Lian, Manager of ADP's University Placement Services, to tell us more about how the transferring process works. Ms. Gan was one of the reasons why I decided to join the ADP program at Taylor's, as she provided me with the much needed information and guidance. She's an alumni from Southern Illinois University of Carbondale, and she's a certified NLP practitioner as well. Ms. Gan, take it away. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, We're glad to see that so many of you are interested to learn more about American Degree Transfer Program. Again, my name is Gan Chai Lian. Uh, I'm the manager from the University Placement Services. So um, you have learned about American Degree Transfer Program and the great uh, learning environment and opportunities. Now let me share further about University Placement Services and resources. First off, you want to know where the Edipian uh, students or the American Degree Transfer Program student go and what are the popular field. So uh, I sort of extracted information for you before uh, the presentation today. So you can see the majority of our students uh, who are currently in business, engineering, actuarial science, liberal arts, and also applied science. So where are they right now throughout the globe? So 85% of our students transfer to United States, and you will see another 7% go to Canada, 5% go to Australia, and of course you have another 3% who transfer to where, uh, somewhere else, yeah, like staying back in, uh, in Malaysia or you know, transfer to UK or other countries. So in America, you want to know uh, where are the popular uh, destinations, what you see what you're looking at on screen right now is the uh, popular destinations um, in America. So most of them are public university in tier one. Um, we do have students who transfer to uh, different sort of university like colleges, liberal arts universities. So there are various uh, choices that you can choose from. We're talking about more than 5,000 choices in America. Let's move on. How do you get there? So you might be wondering at this point, how do you get to the point uh, where, you know, like Guangli and Sean are right now? So you're now at the stage of completing your high school, you're probably in O level uh, or an SPM graduate. Um, so you're thinking about probably coming into ADP. So you spend the first two years of ADP and then you transfer for another two more years in the United States. So throughout the four years, you collect about 120 credit hours and above, then you graduate uh, within four years. What if you're thinking about transferring to Canada? So Canada curriculum and the structure is similar, I would say, uh, to the American system. So uh, very similarly, you do two years of ADP, then you transfer for another two more years in Canada, and there you go in another four to five years, depends on the track that you uh, decided on, is either co-op or non-co-op, you should be able to complete your bachelor's degree in four to five years. 
So you're, you're also wondering, I mentioned about uh, Australia, how does the ADP student can go, uh, you know, study abroad in Australia? So again, with your SPM or SPM uh, or O-level, you come in for another two more years at ADP, then you transfer for uh, another two more years in, in Australia. So it depends on the uh, destination that you choose in Australia. We, uh, with ADP, you, we do have uh, established uh, articulation partnership with certain Australian university for certain majors. So check with us, you know, talk about your options in Australia. We will let you know how to do your best transfer. Okay. University Placement Services is a one-stop placement center on campus, which is exclusive, dedicated to tailored students. So we are a team of very experienced uh, advisor and we are specialized and familiar with various country education system and also study opportunities. So how do we support you throughout your tailored journey? So with placement, there are various of activities and events uh, being held throughout the year. So we do personalized counseling. We have visits from overseas representatives. We have talks and workshops in various topics to help you with your application preparations. We do guide you on a personal level with your university applications. We have a very good uh, library of university prospectus and resources. And every year we have on-campus education fair, um, be it from the America universities, from the um, Canadian university. Every year we, we host it twice a year. So the personalized counseling from semester one, we're gonna guide you. How do you do your research for the university that you're probably interested at? Okay, so uh, we will show you the strategy how do you uh, shortlist your choices of university? Which one uh, would be the best fit for yourself? So ranking, you know, there are resources uh, everywhere. And then we want to get you the information, not just about ranking. You need to know about the university that you're applying for, okay? That is, you know, the right fit. We always emphasize about the right fit. So the guidance on the university application, university prospectus, and also resources. Let's move on. I mentioned about throughout the year, we have tons of events uh, on campus. Uh, of course, this is slightly different. We actually move the um, events uh, on a virtual uh, environment. So this year, we just like the same as the previous years, we do have personal uh, essay workshops. Uh, we have uh, pretty patchy briefings on, uh, on virtual uh, environment as well. And coming next, it's in August, they are US apps workshops as well. So stay tuned, there are more exciting activities coming up. This is another one which is organized by University Placement Services. It is a virtual fair uh, running from Thursday to Sunday on August 13 to 16. So you are able to speak to 63 leading university representatives from nine countries face to face on internet, over the internet. So there are live uh, webinars, there are talks and forums available. So yes, it's open to uh, you to sign up. So please join us. University visits. So hopefully next year, you are able to, again, meet this uh, very awesome representative who are the assistant directors, who are the recruitment officers directly, you know, fly in from Canada and US. You're able to meet them and learn about the study opportunities uh, on campus. They bring America to you. You're from Taylor's campus, you're able to collect your information. So we tell you about the activities and you know that you need to do your own homework, how to uh, select the universities. Along the way, we will guide you. There are information available like the website right here. This is a website uh, designed um, by your senior, by American Digital Program students. We provide information and every uh, semester we update with the latest information that you need to know. So 
in the coming series or during the orientation, I'm going to show you in details how to make use of the information which is already uploaded to the page. And if you want to stay tuned, follow us on Facebook, okay? Follow us on Instagram. So yeah, you get the latest information that you need to know to start your journey with APP. Very excited. We can't wait to see you on campus. So once you're on campus, drop by block A level one and say hi to me. All right. Okay, thank you, Ms. Gan. Um, now we have a question from the audience regarding university transfers, which is, what is the possibility of a transfer student to get a scholarship from US University? Yes, you can get scholarships from the US universities. So uh, there are many uh, different type of uh, scholarship available. So very interesting one I want to highlight uh, is like, you are able to become a am cultural ambassador uh, representing Malaysia. So uh, they do have scholarship like that. You are able to, uh, with a, of course, you need to be qualified for the scholarship. You need to maintain a very good uh, CGPA. And at the same time, you are expected to do cultural sharing. So this sort of uh, scholarships, um, it's available. And of course, on top of that, if you maintain a very high CGPA, you will be eligible for merit-based scholarships. So be confident. We want you to uh, apply for scholarship when you put in your applications. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Gan. And thank, thank you, you for the question. Uh, thank you. Pursuing a degree in a well-ranked university is every individual's dream, but getting accepted into a world-ranked number one university is indeed surreal. Let's hear it from our MIT star, a Petronas scholar, an international mathematics champion and math prodigy, if I say so myself, Mr. Yo Ji Song, who has recently gained acceptance into the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to pursue a degree in mathematics. Song, how did you do it? Hi, so um, hello everyone. So I first uh, introduce, briefly introduce myself. So uh, I was a Petronas scholar and just graduated uh, this year from ADP. So now uh, I'm currently a first year student in MIT, though, I, uh, though because of COVID, so I cannot go there in the first year. But um, and um, maybe, maybe people know me more in the Olympiad community, so I should uh, probably introduce a bit about uh, my Olympiad community, uh, Olympiad background. So um, my main uh, my main subject is mathematics. So I started mathematics when I was very young. I um, so I entered high school. If you have heard of math Olympiads, then I've entered uh, high school math Olympiads since I was uh, in primary school at around uh, ten or eleven. And um, I've joined some international competitions, as you can see in the on the screen now. So uh, I've joined the international math Olympiad, and from there I got to explore from my seniors about different subjects which includes computer science and which led me to join the International Olympiad in informatics. And then uh, in like two years ago, uh, they introduced me to linguistics, uh, which is a very new subject to me, but um, it's also a bit related to mathematics. And then I have fun like uh, with the subject. And so I also joined the International Linguistics Olympiad somehow. <laughs> so, uh, and um, during this uh, Olympiad experience, I met a lot of international students from uh, all over the world. Some of them also went to, uh, also going to MIT like me. And also um, I have a lot of seniors who also went to um, overseas universities, which includes US, um, but also other countries like UK, uh, Hong Kong and uh, Japan and, and et cetera. So um, for me, my own path is um, I got, after high school, I applied for different scholarships. And then in the end, uh, I got the Petronas scholarship then which led me to, um, because uh, I wanted to go to, I wanted to, I wanted to try for UK or US universities, but then in the end I decided on US. Uh, uh, then um, then I got, to, got into the ADP program. So this, that's how I got into Taylor's. So initially I never knew about the ADP program, but due to Petronas scholarship, then I got to know about this program. And then um, from ADP program, then I applied for um, universities and in the end uh, I managed to get into MIT. So um, the application process is briefly uh, basically, first I have to de determine like which universities I want to apply to. So that's like a key question for like everyone. So uh, to, uh, how to choose which universities to apply to? Um, that is actually very de dependent on yourself. So um, you, I have to 
do, do my own research on which, because um, of course you can choose uni, universities based on ranking, but then that's not the only thing you want to look at because um, even though some unis are ranked higher, but it might not like suit, suit your culture. Uh, I mean, the culture might not suit you well. Um, so you need to be able to do um, your own research on which universities you really, really want to go to or like compared to others. Then you need to be able to like project yourself living in that environment in your future years because you have to spend like at least four years in or a few years in that university. So you need to like make sure that you are comfor comfortable living in that environment. So for me, um, I actually, um, my, the first university I looked at was MIT because uh, mainly because a lot of my friends are already there. I'll elaborate on this later. So um, I was quite lucky that I, uh, when I applied to MIT and uh, I applied to MIT during uh, early action round because there's an early round and regular round and I got, I, uh, I got admitted in the early round. So uh, which was actually before the regular round deadline. So, um, so I actually ended up only sub submitting an application to MIT because um, I already uh, got accepted before I got to apply to other universities. So I was quite lucky in that regard, but um, for in general, like um, it's very advisable to like um, explore many different universities because it's not guaranteed that you will get into the, maybe the one you want. So you need to have a few um, options open and then um, you need to um, see which universities that you think you can, um, will, will fit will fit you, uh, will, uh, will be a good fit for you. And that also um, helps you like write your application essays because um, write your application essays, you need to, um, of course, uh, write about yourself. But also you have to like um, write about how you, you are like, you'll be a good fit for the university. So like you have to be uh, able to f uh, fit the culture in the university. And also you have to uh, know like how the university will help you uh, in your future uh, pursuits. And also um, in applying like you have to um, start like planning early. Like for me, I was actually considered uh, like quite late in the, uh, in starting my essays. Like I actually, uh, barely made it to the early action deadline, but um, if you are applying to many universities, like you have to start very early and then start researching what universities you want. So um, then there's a question: um, Why do I choose MIT? So for me personally, the main reason is because um, in uh, in my high school Olympiads, I met a lot of friends from from other countries, like I stated earlier, and um, I think uh, this makes it, makes it easier for me to like collaborate and work on projects with them. Um, if I like go to the same school with them. So there are some examples. So one of my friends from Ukraine, so um, he's actually recently uh, became an admin on the Codeforcer site, which is uh, on the screen here. Then um, I've actually worked with him to like set some problems on the uh, platform. So some, on some days like he'll ask, he'll like randomly message me like, um, do, you have a, uh, do you have some problems that you can contribute to the uh, website? Then I'll be like, oh, sure, I have some problems. Then we'll we'll like um, collaborate and then um, sell some contests. And also another friend of mine, also in MIT, um, he actually I just saw this last week. So um, he started a new website, uh, who is trying to guide um, people into joining competitive programming, which is the info like the informatics Olympiad that I've uh, stated earlier. So um, he started a, a new whole new website that uh, introduces. Uh, competitive programming to both beginners and to very advanced um, experienced uh, participants like, uh, like me or other uh, participants. So I think, um, and this website is like created just by uh, like seven or eight um, US uh, students and most of them are from MIT. And one of my friends also, also started a YouTube channel also uh, in teaching people uh, competitive programming. He's also uh, a freshman in MIT, same as me. Uh, so I think this this um, this brings me to my next point, which is um, I really like the I really like the culture in MIT, which is um, the people there are usually very devoted when working on something. So whether it's classworks or projects or even very fun events, like if you maybe have heard of uh, the MIT Puzzle Hunt, which is a very very large scale uh, puzzle puzzle com puzzle competitions. Like it, uh, it lasts for a few days on campus, and but you can also work off campus, and um, there are like a few 200 or 300 puzzles and it's a team event for like teams of 100 or um, 60, 70 people. So um, I think people there are generally very devoted in uh, doing stuff. And this is also like my style. Like I will spend hours and hours doing the same stuff um, just to, uh, just because I like, I'm interested in the uh, project. 
like not because I'm forced to uh, do something. So I think this culture really suits me well. So that's that's like what another of uh, another one of my main reasons of choosing MIT. So um, okay, I think I should pass it to the next person. So uh, thank you. That's I, that's all I'm sharing. Okay, thank you so much, Ji Song. Now this next star student not only excels academically but also has the gift of the gap. He has emptied several landmark events and is also a Taylor Scholar who has gained acceptance into the prestigious Wharton Business School at the University of Pennsylvania. Fun fact audience, both MIT and UPenn have an acceptance rate of between 7 and 8%. And these guys paint it. So, I would like to present to you Mr. Muhammad Jazlan Haris. Thank you, Erika. Hi, everyone. I'm Jazlan. You guys can call me Jazlan. So I'm an incoming freshman at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I graduated ADP in July 2019 last year. And ever since then, I've been on a gap year. Um, so my journey is a bit unconventional. It's a bit unique. Uh, I, initially, I wanted to go as a transfer student because I wasn't a Petronas scholar like Ji Song and I I wasn't unsure. I was. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in life yet. So the only logical thing uh, I had in my mind was to just follow the two plus two program and maybe have a short experience abroad. But then um, it was a bit last minute, and then I had a change of heart and I decided to take the risk of applying as a freshman, and hence the gap year followed. So the reason why I took a gap year was to discover myself, to really be sure of myself, and to also strengthen myself as an applicant. Um, and so far, like along the way, slowly things started coming in place, and I, little things started becoming sources of inspiration. So I'm just going to share some of those sources of inspiration with you guys. And the first one is, if you could move to the next slide. Yeah, is this book, uh, Elon Musk. Um, is this biography. So this book helped me uh, identify what kind of career I would want in the future and what kind of person I would want to become. And also, most importantly, the university that I will be applying to. Now, I wouldn't say he's my, my idol. I would say he's the catalyst in discovering myself and also he's the catalyst to uh, paving the way towards my future. So here, reading about his life and how he made what seemed impossible become possible, I decided that that's what I want to do in the future as well. I want to be, I want to immerse myself in, uh, in business-driven communities, hence why I chose uh, Wharton as my top choice. And also, I will want the business education he received and the necessary connections I would receive in order to propel myself forward. Um, and the next one is, uh, oops, to the next slide. Yep, this book, Predictably Irrational uh, by Dan Ariely. So I didn't know what I wanted to study. I had no childhood passion whatsoever. Unlike Ji Song, he's impressive. Like he's done math since a young age. I, I didn't know what I wanted to study. I am not a math guy, not a science guy, not anything. Um, I'm not a genius. I'm not a natural born genius whatsoever. But I knew that I was tolerant of economics, but to have my education revolve around economics itself, I, I wasn't sure I was ready for that. But after reading this, it introduced me to the realms of behavioral economics and it fascinated me on how I could learn about the decision-making processes that everyone goes through and also how oblivious we are to the mistakes we make even in day-to-day -day decisions. And it turns into a, um, a prediction line, hence the title Predictably Rational because we're just predictably rational, all of us. Uh, I feel as if if I study this, then it will be a great tool for me in the future, uh, if I intend to go down to my entrepreneurial pursuit, then if I, in the process of translating my ideas into a product or service, then I'll be, I'll be able to understand my market better and not just the market, the investors as well, and maybe take an advantage over them. Uh, just kidding, I'm just kidding, don't worry. But yeah, uh, so these two books actually helped me in discovering what I wanted to study, where I wanted to study, and what I wanted to become. So in that gap year, next slide, please. Yeah, so in the gap year, I've had many opportunities to grow. Um, I, in strengthening myself, I decided to focus on two main uh, criteria, my leadership capabilities 
and my communication skills because I believe those two, those two skills are fundamental in my educational journey. Uh, I've focused my leadership uh, pursuit in high school where I was uh, fortunate enough to become uh, the head boy in my high school. But when I got into Taylor's, I was really, really lucky. I received so many opportunities to become an MC and develop myself as a better communicator and overall confidence. Uh, in the gap year also, I spent three months working as an intern under Axiata Corporation as a brand and marketing intern. So it was in that department. Uh, that internship because I wanted to have a taste of the corporate world and then also uh, make new connections and you know experience firsthand the demands and expectations of large corporations especially when they're taking in young talents so that was what I wanted to experience and I was lucky so all in all I was just really lucky and I'm glad that I took the risk of applying as a freshman because I wouldn't be here where I'm today if I didn't take that risk and also uh, from what all of the effort today, the university's men services here are amazing. And then the lecturers, some of them here have actually personally taught me and have taught me a lot. And uh, I'm forever grateful for them, forever grateful for whatever they've done for me. And honestly, if it wasn't for them, then I wouldn't be achieving whatever I've achieved today. So I'm looking forward to my future uh, education. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to answer. Uh, feel free to, uh, to ask me. Yeah, sorry. Okay, thank you so much, Jaslan. Uh, so before we move on, we we actually have a question uh, that uh, from the audience. The question is: How difficult are the SATs and TOEFL exams? Yeah. Oh, um, I'll be lying if I didn't say the SAT is difficult. It was really difficult for me. I, I took it three times. Yeah, fun fact: I took it three times. The first time I took it lightly. I thought it was just a simple test and then I, I got thrashed really hard. So it was kind of bad the first try. And then second, uh, secondly, I tried, but then it didn't go so well. I, it wasn't satisfactory. So the third time um, I did it, uh, thankfully, I received a score that I was satisfied with. And also, I would like to say that it's definitely difficult. Like every test is difficult, but it, you just have to prepare. The preparation is key. Prepare early, start early, and then gather all the resources and join a community where you can discuss questions, problems, and also discuss answers with all of them and get advice, tips. Uh, I was lucky, at, well, I was at home and then I, I joined the Reddit community on SATs. So they definitely helped a lot. They definitely inspired me. And you know, it, another, another good thing is that when you're having difficult tests like this, especially when you're on your own, but not being spoon fed by schools and such, it's great when you immerse yourself in the community because instead of just helping each other, you, you get encouraged, uh, especially when you see other people posting their grades and you just feel that you want to achieve something like that too. So all in all, it's, I would say it's any test is difficult. It just comes with preparation, but just take it easy and um, just prepare. All right. Thank you so much, Jaslan, for sharing your journey with us. Now, if anyone is more inclined to go to Canada, we have Ung Bob Sean, who's joining us live today from Toronto, Canada. Bob Sean is a computer science major student at the University of Toronto, Canada's number one university. Interestingly, Bob Sean had also interned with our industry partner, End-to-End -End Connect Verhat, on the Automatic Timesheet Management System project. So let's welcome Bob Sean to tell us about his journey. All right. Thank you, Erica. Um, welcome, guys, um, to my talk. Um, so uh, can you go to the next slide? I'll be discussing with you guys like my pathway towards uh, UOT, like how I went from uh, Malaysia towards uh, to Canada. Um, so we can see I first started in a uh, high school called Serious Scholar. If you guys heard of Ace Adventure, so Ace Adventure kind of, uh, it's part of Serious Scholar. And I've been there for four years. And then I took my IGCSE exam. Then after uh, I studied at Taylor's University for two years, and I took my IELTS exam, which was, which was a bit hard, but uh, I still managed like, to get like the minimum score to finally get into UOT. 
Uh, we call UOT the short for UC of Toronto. Um, but the thing is, when I entered UOT, was I entered as a first year, and and after entering as a first year, you would have to apply for transfer credit assessment, meaning that they will see like your credits from Taylor's, and they'll assess accordingly and see if they can be transferred. And thankfully, that most of my credits could be transferred and be used as my breath requirements. So right now, I'm at I'm Taylor's. I, I mean, sorry, I'm at UOT for my. Uh, it, it's the end of the first year of UOT. I'm going into my second year. And I can say that I've already done all my breath requirements. All I have to do is computer science subjects. Um, uh, can you go to the next slide? Okay, so here are like some places in Canada that I, I've been since like the past year. Uh, if you're interested in like the top left here is Canada, um, I mean, sorry, Toronto. This is Young Street, which is one of the most uh, populated places in Toronto. Um, the next two pictures is me like in a skating rink at the middle of um, um, the, the, the city. Um, so it's open usually in the winter, but right now it's not open, unfortunately. And to the right is, is like a small beach at the Toronto, it's like a fake beach. And also at the bottom is a place called Bruce Peninsula. It's a really nice place. I would say Canada's wilderness is actually one of the best. Um, we went up north, even though it's cold, but it was a really nice view. And then uh, the bottom picture with me and my friend there, that's Montreal. Uh, it's, a re it's a French speaking place. And the last one is just me and my, my, my friends in uh, my student residence, which you can find a lot of other international students. So I would say like you wouldn't feel uh, like a foreigner inside Canada. You actually find a lot of international people, a lot of people from China, a lot of Chinese people, um, a lot of people from India also. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Well, thank you to all of our alumni and also to all of our presenters for inspiring us. And just a friendly reminder, Everyone, please do like and follow our Taylor's ADP Facebook and Instagram page. And I would also like to highlight that this is the first part of the four-part series webinar over the next four weeks. We would really like you to join us in the next webinar which features several U.S. experts from the U.S. universities and Education USA in Kuala Lumpur. So do stay tuned. And now we will be open to our breakout sessions with the career counselors and ADP faculty. So please do forward any questions you have and schedule a follow-up counseling session. Thank you. Hi guys, Eric here. Is it okay that maybe we can do the Wi-Fi now? Because I believe for Sean, Guangli, Bob, their time zone is different, so we might not want to <laughs> hold them too long. Okay. How is it? Shall we have all the speakers ready and the participants too? Yep, sounds good, Eric. Thanks, Ms. Mayor. So, can I have everyone to switch on their video cam? It doesn't matter how you look, it's Saturday. Anybody can look. Correct, <laughs> <laughs> correct. Oh, we have two page of video. Hold on, let me double check first, yeah. Okay, for the rest, could you like open your video cam right now? Thank you so much.
you may need to freeze for about like 30 seconds because we have three page of the <laughs> of the people so please uh, bear with me a while okay so i will going i'm going to take the first screenshot from the uh, first page here please get ready this page what i can see is in featuring dr yvonne miss prema bob are you opening sorry maybe my line is a bit slow so song is here as well miss gun as well kiting is here Bernard also, Erica also, Miss Lim, Nazreen, Jaslan, my colleague uh, Jaying, Totolo also here, and the remaining will be our participant at like Hui. I think it's, okay, a few of the Petronas scholars is here as well. Okay, Guan Li is on. How about for Bob? Okay, thank you. All right, let me take the screenshot for the first slide. Please stand by. Dr. Azim is also in the first slide. Please get ready. One, two, three. Three. Page two, get please get ready. Uh, our participants. Okay, page two we have JB Witten and most most of it is our Petrona scholar Bineng Rui as well. Uh, yeah, Li An and Li Jin also there. Okay, please get ready. One, two, three. Okay, let me paste the folder first. Okay, page three, we have Safwan, Teresa, uh, Ejoy, Yujun, Amalia, Ifan, Samuel, Mujahid. Okay, and Idli, I think. Okay, please, please get ready. One, two, three. Thank you. Well, Miss Teresa, you're driving. Please be careful. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you, Miss Teresa, for your enthusiasm for participating in our webinar, even though you're on driving. Okay. All right. Um, Miss Tava, can I know? Um, oh yeah. Thank you for all the uh, uh, um, um, screenshot or the wifi. Uh, but can I know? Do we deliver all the question already? Not all of it. We yeah. could pull it up if you have it on uh, visual, or else we could attempt to answer it right away. Sure. Uh, let me see. Well, if anybody this? has any other questions as well, you yeah, can, you can add. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Just ask us as well. Sure. I believe this has been answered, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. This as well, right? Ah, the fees for a FOIA program. Yeah, so I think we can email the, the fees. Mm, no worry. I, I, I know who asked this question and I believe she have talked to Miss Gan uh, recently. Mm -hmm. Just uh, yeah, this yeah. Yeah. The three plus one we do have, right? And mainly it's for business major. <laughs> this is a very generic question. Maybe we can get our alumni and students. Alumni will answer that for answer. you. Yeah, they will answer that for you. They How do you describe ADP at Taylor's? One word, everybody, quick. Uh, Kai Teng? <laughs> uh, fun and friends. Fun and friends. Erica? Yes. Uh, diversity. Ooh. John? No regrets. No regrets. It's two words. Oh, <laughs> fun and <laughs> <laughs> Wang Li? Um, uh, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> um, Jaslan? Zizong? Zizong, Jaslan? Come on. Yeah. Uh, flexible. Just shout out. To be fun. <laughs> Jaslan? Flexible. 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 Bernard? Okay. American. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> Could you give them some tips on how to maintain a, CG, a high CGPA very quickly? I think you just have to listen in class and then uh, do revision on a weekly basis or maybe on a daily basis. And then you also, uh, you, you always do your homework and because in Taylor is a 70% cost work, right? So if you do all this, you usually get an A or even A plus for me. That's how it works for me. I, I think uh, it, it also comes down to how you choose your classes. Like not to overly burden yourself with classes so that you can yeah. keep up with the classes as well. Yeah. If I can add to that, what Justin mentioned is actually very important, uh, especially prior to coming to America. So when you start planning your classes properly in uh, Taylor's ADP, you'll be gaining that particular skill when you come to America as well. Because you're going to have a lot more ranges of classes. You need to be able to pick your classes and to find your own balance when you're still in ADP. So you have a smoother transition here in America. I would say one of okay, the... Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yes, Gwani. <Bunny. laughs> that I learned since coming to US is that you must have a good connection with your... Um, academic professors or lecturers, they are the ones that are going to help you out because at the end of the day, they are the ones that are passing down all the knowledge to us. So the best way it is, is to meet up with your lecturers after class or even during office hours. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Eric, any more? I think we have one more, just because this one yeah. is registered. It was the most on. recent one. Yeah. All right. Um, are TOEFL or SAT difficult? I don't think this is relevant. Yeah, but Jaslan has already uh, told yeah, right. you just now. He took three attempts yeah, at yeah, yeah. SATs. Yeah, so sometimes yeah. that's necessary if you are so uh, determined. What are your tips for us to success in ADB program? This is from Petronas Corner. How do you manage your time? Mm. I think Guan Li answered that earlier okay. about the balance and uh, I think, yeah, we covered much ground on that. Uh, this question is a bit academic. Can I drop any subject that I'm not interested in? Uh, yes, you can, but depend on the timeline, I would say that. Mm, okay, I would just add to that. It All depends right. on whether the subject is a requirement or an elective. If it is a requirement, you might have no choice but to you know, pull your way through it, even if it's a very challenging journey. But if it is an elective, you always have a certain level of choice. Okay. All right. That's all about it. Okay. Add on from Kai Ting, one of our moderators who I've mentioned just now. Uh, we um, received two this person who request for the uh, academic counseling, which is uh, Sapwan and Zhuxuan. One is looking for um, ADP lecturer in the computer science field. Dr. Azim will be uh, with you in a while. Sapwan. Yes. And one more for the uh, regarding the UPS topic, which is from Zhuxuan. So please stand by for uh, Sapa and Zhuxuan. <clears throat> You'll be meeting uh, the relevant academic or the UPS manager, which is Ms. Gan, in a while. So I think should be that's all from my side here. Should we have a closing remark from Ms. Grammar? Yes, sure. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We hope to see you at the next session that we have on the 8th of August. Um, we hope all your questions are answered, but we always encourage you to have even more questions. So please um, drop us a line. You have all our contacts. You have um, our um, Eric's contact as well. So if you have any in need to know anything more, this is just sort of a, the first meeting or first discussion that we're having. So you will definitely have even more questions. Um, so please feel free. Um, to, to write to in to us with all your questions and we are all here to support you in this journey and um, as you can see from our alumni from the US and Canada um, we don't really let you go you <laughs> we will <laughs> in touch and we will we are still here to support you all in any way so I hope you had a good session today I hope you have a very good weekend and I hope to see you all soon thank you Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Ms. Prema. So, 
for those students um, who would like to stay back to uh, request for counseling? Yeah. The ADP uh, faculty and a few mm -hmm. alumni will just hold on for maybe a couple of minutes. And if you have any questions whatsoever, we will address it. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much, Prima. Thank you. Okay, I have actually uh, uh, created the two breakout rooms, one for Dr. Azim and Safwan and one for Ms. Gan. Okay. Okay. So student, you yeah. guys can see the notification now. If you see a notification, you may join the breakout room right now. For the remaining, if you don't have um, you know, anything already, <laughs> you, might, you may just leave the meeting here. Okay, if you wish to uh, chat with us or maybe I want to find out from for certain item, either you can refer back to your education counselor or you may private message to Mr. Mao Ziyong so that we will uh, align accordingly, okay? Zizong is also available. He's given you, uh, you know, his uh, email, his contact. So anyone can also message him and uh, have a chat with him. Or oh, do you guys want to put your email address in the chat box? <laughs> okay, I can see Dr. Azim, Safwan, Ms. Gan, and Ms. Yeah. Chuan is in the, the room already. Mm -hmm. Oh damn, I forgot to set the timing. Hmm. Thank you guys. Thanks for joining in. You may leave the meeting now. Yeah, thank you so, so much for, you know, being so accommodating uh, and for, you know, all the slides, the presentations, the test run, you know, yep. for always stepping up and coming forward to help us out here. Yeah. And your sharing was most appreciated. Uh, we will be troubling you from time to time. I shall uh, alert you on that. Yeah. I think one we, uh, has something to do in in just another two weeks time, uh, so I have told him that he can't say the same old things. Yeah, so he will he will try to think of uh, something new, something fresh, uh, to keep everyone uh, and engaged. Yeah, Erica, Kai Ting, thank you so much. Uh, you guys did a great job. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, there's always the last minute uh, things that happen. Yeah, we whenever there's an event. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, girls. Thank you, Miss Tava. Thank you, Miss Tava. Thank you, Kaiting. Thank you, Erica. Jaslan, I'll get in touch with you because I've told you what I have in mind. Uh, uh, if you change the number, you please update me. Yeah. Wait, wait. You've told me what you had in mind. What? What do you have? In yes, mind? for next semester. All right. Uh, I would like to do a feature of you, and uh, you know that would have to be planned out a little better. Uh, but I'll do it during the semester. All okay. Right. As I as I mentioned earlier. So 